All right, what's going on gliders? Today I have another interesting video for you. So someone in the low code community has been asking about a scheduling app. And so they want a simple way for people to be able to book, to book half an hour slots from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and have no kind of overlap in terms of bookings and that sort of stuff. So I experimented this morning and came up with this little solution and this solution actually leverages something that Darren Murphy taught me uh, quite a while back using a helper table. So credit to him, but I'll show you how it works. So let's jump into the application. And this is just an overview of how it actually functions. So when you click make a booking, it opens a new screen. This has a date selection box, then a time selection box, and then you submit the booking and it pops up and you can see that went from two more to three more and we have all bookings here. So what I'll do is just go back to the month view and I'll make a booking on the 14th so it's a bit easier to see. So we go 14th and let's just select 11 a.m. and then you can see it's submitted. Now if you notice, I'll go back to make a booking, I'll select the 14th and 11 a.m. is now gone. So it's going from 10.30 to 11.30. And if I do 11.30, you'll notice that when I come back to select that time again, there's no 11.30. So this is really handy if you're doing some sort of booking app or scheduling or something like that. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works on the back end now. So let's jump into the data tables. And essentially all you need for this is, besides the standard user table, is a register of all the bookings a one line booking form that never really changes and it's dynamic to each user. And then a booking helper, which essentially lists out all the options and tells you whether or not that particular thing is available, uh, that slot is available. So we'll jump into the bookings form and all you need here is just a row ID. I always add one just in case, it's not nece uh, necessary in this particular case, but it's always good to add a row ID. We have the user ID of the person who submitted the booking. And then we just have a relation table that is looking up the user based on this ID and then it's pulling in their name. Then we have in the date and time folder, we have just the date that they've selected, the time that they've selected, and then a combination of the date and time as a template column. So we're replacing date and time with their selections. And then this is just a booking name just to make it a bit prettier on the front end. We have the name and the time. So when we're looking at the calendar, we can see who's booked what time. So this is all you need for the actual register of all the bookings. If we go into the booking form, this is one row and it will always remain one row. You're never adding to this particular um, table. It's just acting as a placeholder for the data that the person is submitting in the form. So what we can see here is that we have some user details and this is just a template column that is pulling in nothing other than the row ID of the current user. So that's that and then this is just template column again and it's pulling in the name of the current user. You could also use a lookup but it, it's not necessary in this case, it's much easier to just do this. Then we have a user specific column of the date selection. And this is what they're selecting when that drop down comes up on the front end and a time selection. Again, same thing. When they select it in the drop down, it's going here. And then we have just a template column. So again, really simple date and time, date and time. Now the most important bit, the way this, the way, the reason that this uh, works and the certain dates are blocked out is because because we have what we call a helper table or what Darren is called a helper table. And all this is, is essentially just a list of all the items we want to show up in the drop down when it comes to time. But what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we want to grab the first value from the booking form and put it here. So this is this value here, right? So whatever the user selects, is going to be inputted here. Then what we're going to do is in the same format we have before, we're going to have the date and the time 
in a template column. So the date is being replaced by whatever they've selected on the front end and the time is being replaced by whatever this option here says in terms of the name. Then we want to look up without any relation, just a straight look up of the bookings, date and time, full date. So if we go back to that table, this particular column here is looking up this column. And so what it's doing is in the last column, there's a query or you can say an, an array sort of um, array query. And what it's going to do, it's going to mark true if this is found anywhere in all of the current bookings. So if it is found, it's going to say, yep, I found it. And then on the front end, what you can do is when you create this selection, you're going to filter out all the options or sorry, you're going to show only the options where taken is not checked, right? So we had two that were checked previously on the back end. We can see here that this is 11 and 1130 were checked, which means on the front end, we're not going to see 11 and 1130. All right, what I want to quickly do is jump in and show you one important detail that I left out in the original recording, and that's how you submit the booking uh, to the booking table. So this button here, make a booking, is simply opening a new screen for this item, which is in this case, the booking form table, which has one row, and it's just a slide in. So when we click this, it's sliding in. And then this isn't a form or anything, but what you're going to do is you have a date selection uh, component. You have a choice component that's put, pulling in all the info from the um, data table. And you can look over here, if they help a table, sorry. And you can look over here and just see the value is the time option and it's displaying as the time option. And then the submit button is just a normal button with a custom action. So when I select a date and I select a time, the button appears. This button has a simple action associated with it. So what it's going to do, it's going to add a row to the bookings table using the user's ID for the user ID column, the date and time selection from the booking form table as the date and time selection. Um, and that's all that is. Then it's going to close the overlay. It's going to show a notification and then it's going to clear the values from the booking form table, right? Because there's only one row. So if you didn't clear them, when you went to rebook, it would show the same time, but it would already be taken. So you'd run into errors. So that's it. That's how it works. And um, yeah, if you're interested in learning more, then you are more than welcome to join the free uh, low code school community that I've created or I'm sure you'll see me popping up in more tutorials around here. So 